So Kat Waddell, um, so her work is in production sculpture and plastic waste. Um, her talk is called Polymer Legacy. Um, and when she was um, younger, she was sort of given this option of choosing between bio and art. Um, and when she was in university, she was able to sort of reignite her passion for the two combined as uh, sci art. So, uh, Kat Waddell. Great, hi everyone. Um, thank you for the lovely introduction. Um, I also go by Kat, if that's easier to remember for everyone. Um, so today, I'm gonna talk about my uh, piece, Polymer Legacy. Just a little bit background information on me though. I'm an interdisciplinary mixed media artist um, and I graduated from Emily Carr University. Uh, when I went there I did a major in visual arts uh, where I was reintroduced to science um, as a component of art and uh, thankfully got to meet a lot of different artists there who actually have an interest in, in science as well and actually is how um, I became part of Curiosity Climate as well. Um, I'm also an associate of the James Black Gallery here in the Mount Pleasant area, so if you're in the area, um, we're just down the road there if you want to come check us out. Um, so I do create installations, uh, and a lot of them are prepared from repurposed and hand-built materials. I have an advocacy for cultural diversity and science literacy, and it often influences concepts and themes in my practice. Um, I do a lot of collaborative work with um, and research with scientists to develop a shared understanding of how knowledge can be translated across communities um, and in different disciplines as well. These are a few works here. All right, so diving into uh, the research process for uh, the current piece that I'm working on, um, I'm gonna be doing a projection sculpture called Polymer Legacy for Curiosity Collider's inaugural Collision Festival um, with the theme Invasive Systems. And uh, in that, I'm gonna be um, essentially doing research um, with scientists to dive deep into um, plastic usage in everyday life. And in that, I'm essentially gonna be talking about um, ecosystems and other things that are uh, affected by plastic waste. It's um, scientifically undeniable that humans have an invasive effect on our environment. And there are some scientists at UVic, UBC, U of T, just to name a few, who are doing research on plastic waste and how it's harming our local environment and local species. And in my research, I'm investigating um, essentially human reliance on plastic. I wonder what micro and macro effects um, plastic waste has on the survival of local species and what social systems and practices uh, influence our reliance, our daily reliance on plastic. In pursuing these questions in my research, um, again, I'll be creating a projection installation uh, that sort of goes through all these materials and everything for the exhibition. And I hope to confront myself and the viewers with our synthetic polymer legacy and examine um, the different systems and our daily habits that directly contribute to plastic pollution. Getting into my research, so I've started essentially by um, analyzing the things in my daily life that are made out of plastic. So I've condensed the photos down quite a bit. I've got hundreds and hundreds of photos so far and uh, it's pretty overwhelming. But from just a couple examples that I have here, you know, taking a photo with my phone, the case is made out of foam, there's components in it uh, that are also made out of plastic. The paint that I use, the containers are all made out of plastic. If anybody paints with acrylic paint, that's all synthetic polymer based, so paint is also made out of plastic. Components in electronics, even the brushes that I'm using, and um, even the, the fabric behind there on my, on my couch, probably made of plastic. Um, so here are a few more examples here. So plastic water bottle, plastic cup, um, cameras, tents, are all made from synthetic polymers. 
Um, electrical materials are also have plastic components in them. Um, and I was lucky enough to see the solar eclipse uh, a few years back and even the glasses that we wore to see the eclipse wouldn't have been possible without plastic. Um, so it's not necessarily, you know, demonized and everything, but we have been in so many scientific um, progressions with the invention of plastic. And leading up to that, that sort of spurred me into my, my research uh, for where did plastic come from? And so plastic was um, originally, the term was um, by a chemist named Leo Hendrik Baeklin. And the term was uh, coined to describe a completely new synthetic material. Uh, and that was over 110 years ago. So plastic, as we know it today, has been around for a long, long time, over a century. Uh, and its modern applications uh, essentially started with the war effort in World War I, World War II, and there were synthetic materials that were used to create things like parachutes, so nylon and acrylic were used uh, in the war efforts. Um, some of it was used for making um, clothing, as well as used in planes, and as well as in bombs as well, so lots and lots and lots of plastic. But then after the war effort, um, they essentially had this material and started marketing it for consumer use. So here's an ad from the 1950s talking about uh, cellophane as a great way to package all your produce and um, essentially it feeds into how we value plastic and how it pairs with our social values. So we, we value things like self-reliance, freedom of choice, um, plastic allows us to save time and labor, um, and it's a symbol for bounty and prosperity and, um, and it's a very economical choice in relation to other examples. Um, and to be honest, that none of that's really changed in terms of how we use plastic today. So it's been approximately the same for the past hundred years. Uh, and that gets me into where plastic comes from. So plastic is made from crude oil and natural gas. So it's extracted from the earth. And then the oils are uh, processed. And in that processing, um, <coughs> When it's processed, uh, it creates monomers. Um, some examples are styrene, vinyl, chloride, ethylene, uh, glycol, etc. There's a lot of examples. And essentially, when these um, monomers are chemically bonded, they create polymers. And some of the most um, common ones that we use today are polyethylene, polypropylene, and polystyrene. So good old styrofoam. Um, and this led me to wonder exactly how long does plastic last? And so this is just a little infographic uh, that I have up here that sort of just shows you um, exactly how long each type of plastic lasts. So plastic bags, a couple decades, but it can last for hundreds and hundreds of years. And so that led me to wonder, uh, where does plastic go if we're not recycling it? Because, you know, obviously the right thing to do is to recycle. Um, but if it's not recycled, then it where, where does it go, what happens to it. So plastic, um, it doesn't actually break down, it breaks up. So it doesn't degrade, essentially. It just becomes smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And that is uh, what is called microplastics. So microplastics are defined as little tiny particles of plastic that are less than five millimeters in size. Um, and that definition was uh, gracefully given to me by Garth Coverington, who is a um, he's a PhD student at UVic, so he works for the Department of Biology, and I had the opportunity to visit his lab right here um, out at UVic, and he was able to give me a tour of uh, the project that he's working on right now with the National Contaminants Advisory Group, where they're investigating microplastics in BC's coast. Uh, coastal food web. And they're trying to determine whether microplastics, uh, when they're ingested by fish and other small invertebrates, um, they're wondering how it's accumulating within the food web and how it's affecting the ecosystems and eventually how it will in turn come back and uh, affect us. So Garth's team went and collected specimens from the BC coast and 
they brought them back to the lab. So that's just a photo I got from him from Instagram there. And he brought all the specimens back to the lab for analysis. So from here, they separated uh, all the bits. And they essentially, has anyone seen Breaking Bad? <laughs> Show of hands, yeah. OK, so the scene, sorry, I'm going to, spoilers. Sorry, guys. Um, there's a scene where he uh, essentially breaks down a body in a bathtub and like liquefies it. It's the same process that they're doing here to find the plastic samples. And so this, yeah. <laughs> um, so they, essentially, they're breaking them down. They're liquefying the organic matter. and. There he is, all Breaking Bad style. And then so they're breaking them down and then they're using a very fine filtration system to separate the organic and the inorganic matter. And then from there it's put onto a Petri dish and then they analyze every single little Petri dish for little plastic particles. So once they find them, they separate them out into a different, magnify or, uh, a different Petri dish right there. Uh, which then they document and will go on for further study. Um, something I noticed while I was there, and it again just emphasizes our reliance on plastic, is that everything's made of plastic. So even the materials that they use to make sure nothing's cross-contaminated, made out of plastic, microscopes made out of plastic, everything's made of plastic. And this is uh, one of these specimens that I got to see when I was there at his lab, and it's actually a microfiber which Garth said is actually uh, the most common type of microplastic that's found within um, marine digestive tract. And so microfibers essentially come from um, clothing. So anything that's made out of a synthetic material, whether it's nylon or polyester, anything like that, um, breaks down and enters the water system through things like our washing ma washing machines. So it enters through our homes, and there's not enough, or there's not a fine enough filtration system within our technology, within even our uh, city water filtration plants to catch the microplastics. So that's how it's ending up in our main water systems. Um, so right now they're analyzing these particles here. They're taking them actually to the University of Toronto in September to do further analysis of them um, to figure out exactly what types of plastics are being found. Um, and right now, like throughout all my research so far, I'm finding out that there isn't a lot of um, research being done. It's just starting now, it's in the past few decades. Uh, so we really don't know the monumental effects of what plastic pollution is doing to our ecosystem and our environment and then in turn to us as well. Um, if you do want to take part in collecting plastic here in Vancouver, um, I'm going to be going with the uh, Great Canadian Shore Cleanup on Saturday, August 24th. Um, so feel free to come join. And I'll be posting basically all the documentation on Instagram. So feel free to give me a follow at Kat Waddell. Um, they do shore cleanups all year long, so you know if you want to get involved, feel free at any point in time on their website there. But yeah, thanks so much for your time, and hope to see you there.